In this video, we're going to go over the fresh makeup look, or what I like to call the anti-fatigue look. So for those of you that are feeling a little tired or you're looking lackluster, let's go ahead and show you guys how to do an easy makeup look for every day. Make sure you stay to the end where I show you guys how to transition from a day look to a night look using just two makeup products. Let's get started. Starting with the Shiseido Gentle Cleansing Wipes. This helps to remove any impurities, makeup, or oil that is sitting on the surface of the skin. Once we've cleansed, we're going to go ahead and grab a face oil. The Botanical Republic is a great oil. It's light and it goes right into the skin, but feel free to use any oil you want. This step is really important because what we're trying to do with the skin is add a glow so that it helps with dullness. Adding a further layer of moisturization to the skin, I'm going to use the Chantecaille Flower Harmonizing Cream. This is a nice lightweight hydrating cream, just putting it all over the face. And then we're going to grab some eye patches by PTR. For those of you that have noticed, your eyes look a bit fatigued. Dark circles, fine lines, deeper set lines, just overall hydration loss. Definitely reach for eye patches. They help to plump underneath the eye area. Grabbing now my RMS Serum Drops. These have light reflective pearly pigments to them. And what I like to do is place this product on the high points of the face so I can catch the light. Remember, if you bend the light, that's how you know you're doing it right. So I'm placing it in the areas that I really want to focus on, which is usually in a T-shape, down the center of the face and on the cheekbones, on the outer edge. Then I'm going to go in with whatever's left over and pat it into the skin. Now this next step is so important. You really want to focus underneath that eye area once again to help your eyes look nice and bright and to soften any signs of fatigue. Using one of my top three foundations for 2023, the Shiseido Skin and Glow, pumping a little bit of that on the back of my hand and then loading the product onto the brush. We're gonna go in with light strokes. We're trying to use this more like a tinted moisturizer effect rather than a foundation. So think light to medium coverage. We want transparency. We want the skin to glow. That will create a fresh look, which will help with that kind of fatigue, lackluster, dull skin that makes us look tired. So thin layers all over. Let the RMS Radiant Serum or any serum that you're using underneath with those light reflective pigments still be able to shine through. I'm patting a little bit underneath the eyes as well to soften and brighten, but we're going to also add a concealer here in just a minute. First step with our complexion done, nice, glowy, and hydrated. Using now one of my favorite concealers, this is by Tom Ford. I'm going to place this strategically just where I need it, around the eyes for discoloration, around the nose for redness, and down the center of the face to use as a highlight. Use it anywhere else that you want, dark spots, acne. Just make sure that you're using just a very little bit. Going in with a domed soft fluffy brush, I'm just lightly feathering that onto the areas of the face that we put the concealer down and blending it in. I'm using a light flick of the wrist here to softly press it in. Using my fingers, which is another great tool to use, it has heat and oil. This helps to soften the pigments in your concealer. Using the Cool Toned Westman Atelier Contour Stick, I'm going to use this on a flat, firm brush. Now, I'll be alternating between two brushes, this flat, domed brush, and then a softer brush that helps to blend. Contouring is a wonderful way to bring out your individual features. As you can see, I went underneath her cheekbone, I'm going around the forehead, and this helps to create shadow, which then enhances the areas that have light and makes them even brighter. You can also use contour to soften or slim a feature, as you can see that I did with her nose. As I continue working on the outer edge of her face, this will help to create a center that is nice and bright, specifically underneath the eyes, down the center of the nose, and around the lip area, creating a focal point. And to keep everything in unison, don't forget to add a little to the ears. Adding contour to a small, dense, domed brush, we're going to carve out the shape of her eye to make it bigger. She does have a slight hooded lid. So to open the eye as well as elongate, we're going to create the illusion of a bigger eye, which usually looks like a more rested eye because it helps to open the eye further. So we brought it from the inner corner to the outer corner. And this is basically like sketching. You're kind of drawing the shadow and the shape into the eye. And I highly recommend doing this before you put shadows on because by going in with contour, it creates a bit of a first look of what you're going to be doing with your shadows. It's a great way to also practice working with your eye shape. Going down the sides of the nose helps to further make the eyes look bigger because we're drawing the viewer's eyes to those lines and that helps to elongate the features horizontally as well as vertically. Using one of my favorite eyeshadows for 2023, the Surratt 
creamy jelly cooling eyeshadow. These have light reflective pigments in it. Go on beautifully. I like to put it on my finger and just press it into the lid in little flicks of the wrist. I'm going up a little bit onto the brow bone, but it's mostly on the lower lash line. Taking now the Makeup Forever Artist Pencil. These can be used all over the face, but I'm gonna use the dark brown against the lash line and really work it into the inner corner all the way to the outer edge. Doing the same on the other side. And then I'm going to use a small domed brush to soften that line. I always go over the line work so that it's not harsh. I'm a big believer in setting the eyeliner with powder. It softens the line and it also helps to set the eyeliner. Think of it just like a powder to a foundation. Using a triangle powder puff and my Chanel eyelash curler, we're gonna curl the lashes. And I use the triangle powder puff because it helps to not create an indention with the metal part of the eyelash curler onto the cheek. Using the Hourglass Mascara, I'm gonna go ahead and coat the lashes. And I want to take a second here to talk about the importance of how you apply your mascara. Work in the direction that your lash grows in. That will create a fan lash look, which helps to further open the eyes. And it helps further create a wide awake look. Using a few lashes from the midpoint to the outer edge makes a huge difference. I gradate them from medium to small, or you can do from long to medium, but it really does help to create a beautiful, sultry eye look. Using an eyebrow pencil, I use a technique called scribbling where you don't do any hard lines. You basically just stain the skin underneath the brow hair and use the spoolie to soften the pigments. As you can see, I'm just lightly scribbling in and then softening as I move through. Using the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer, I'm going to use this to soften and add a warm glow as well as set the contour that we placed down earlier. I'm going over all the areas that I already placed down with the contour. Also, having a little bit of warmth on the skin on top of that cool creates a nice juxtaposition. Using now a smaller brush, I'm going to go over the lid work that we did with the contour, which helps to further set the creamy texture. And I'm just extending that out just a bit to further elongate the eyes. Using the Chantecaille face powder with light shimmery pearly pigments, I'm going to use this to set as well as brighten. So I'm putting this on the center of the face, pretty much anywhere the contour wasn't, because what we wanna do is brighten those areas that we wanna bring forward. So definitely under the eyes, on the jawbone, on the ears, we're gonna add a little more and place it on the brow bone, on the inner corner of the eye to brighten, as well as that cheekbone area. A little makeup artist tip, take your favorite highlighter and your favorite face powder and mix the two together and it will give you the same effect. At this point, you should really start to see the highlighter and the contour bringing out your features. Using one of my favorite lip liners, this is by Makeup Forever, it's waterproof. It was made for the Parisian Aquatic Ballet. It's a great pencil for those of you who have issues with feathering or bleeding around the edge of your lips. Whether you have smaller lips or fine lines or deeper set lines, highly recommend. Now feel free to stop here for a natural pouty lip stain look. This lipstick formula is beautiful. This is by Olivia Palermo and the color is a soft pink. And I'm putting this just lightly on the bottom lip, having her press her lips together. And then I'm going to stipple it across the upper lip. To create a fuller pout, you don't wanna to put too much lipstick on. You wanna create a nice transparency. If you put too much on, it will create a matte, flat, dense look, making the lips look smaller. Using that same lipstick, I'm gonna add a little bit to the back of my hand, use a loose fluffy brush, add it to the tips of the bristles, and place it on the apples of the cheeks, letting it blend onto that bronzer and contour. You wanna focus on the apple of the cheek and let it overlap a bit onto those areas on the outer edge, little on the forehead and down the nose. This will help to keep your makeup color story in unison. Using now the Laura Mercier Peach Gloss, we're gonna place that on the center of the lips. Now feel free to stop with the lipstick and the lip liner. This just adds a further layer of light as well as to help volumize or give a fullness to our lips. Let's continue to drape the skin in beautiful light pearly pigments strategically. I'm placing this around the upper lip area and then I'm gonna go in on the tip of the nose very lightly on the inner corner of the eye, and on the brow bone. I can't emphasize this enough as a professional makeup artist, and that is work in strategic 
application. Think of where you really want to place your light and your shadow to bring out your features. Now let's go ahead and get into a nighttime look. I'm using here the Hourglass. This is the Shattered Light eyeshadows. These are beautiful. These are light reflective pigments that are really finely milled but really pop. As you can see, I'm just placing these on the center of the lid and as she moves and opens and closes her eyes, you really see how this creates a beautiful eyeshadow for nighttime. Adding now a red lip liner, once again, makeup forever. I'm just shaping the lips here. And you wanna take your time because the lip liner is what helps with the border, which helps also with smearing and longevity when it comes to the next step, which is your lipstick. Using now the Dior Liquid Lipstick, I'm gonna place this all over the lips. I like to start in the center and then feather out to the edges. Adding now to the top of the lip, I'm gonna go ahead and lightly meet up to those edges. And here we have it. Adding now the Dior Gloss, we're going to further add that volumizing, light catching lip look. I'm placing it on the center and then going on to the top of that lip and focusing on the Cupid's bow. And here's the final look, two steps to take our look from day to night. I hope you guys enjoyed this look on how to create a fresh look, how to shape your features, and how to create a look that goes from day to night. If you enjoyed the artistry education and want to support the channel, the best way to do that is to subscribe and use the affiliate links down below in the description box. You can also book me for a one-on-one -on -one session at shrevoyage.com. Everything is down below. As always, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.